The Triassic period, the first period in the age of the dinosaurs, was a time of unparalleled evolutionary weirdness. In the aftermath of the Great Dying, the worst mass extinction event in the history of life, organisms had almost free reign over the newly opening niches and new habitats developing across the planet. All sorts of lineages began to diversify and experiment with some body plans that appear very strange to our modern eyes looking back across the fossil record. But of course these apparently unusual anatomies were very successful for the animals that had them, otherwise they wouldn't have evolved in the first place. The fossil record of the Triassic period is filled with a variety of wonderfully bizarre animals. From super long necked marine reptiles to armoured reptilian platypus mimics. But in this video we're going to be taking a look at one of the earliest vertebrate experiments with taking to the air. In 1965 an intriguing fossil was uncovered in Kyrgyzstan that turned out to be something entirely unique. The paleontologists who found this fossil weren't looking for anything like it, in fact they'd been out there looking for fossil insects. But what they had was something truly amazing. A small block of sediment dating to the late Triassic period, about 225 million years ago, contained the bones of a remarkable reptile. In 1971 it was named as the new species Podopteryx mirabilis by the Russian paleontologist Alexander Sharov, who recognised it as some kind of gliding reptile. The fossil not only preserved the bones of this amazing animal, but also the traces of membranes spread between the hind limbs and tail, the wings of this reptile. In 1981 another study was published on this fossil which actually renamed it, since it turned out that the name Podopteryx was already in use for a genus of living damselfly. These other paleontologists renamed it to Sharovipteryx, meaning Sharov's wing, in honour of Alexander who had passed away by that point. Only this single fossil of Sharovipteryx is known to science, and it really is a stunning specimen. It shows a very small, about 20cm long animal with incredibly slender bones. But of course, the most notable features are those membranes, supported by incredibly long back legs that would have enabled this creature to spread the wings and take to the air. However, nothing about its anatomy suggested it was a true powered flyer. Instead, it was most likely gliding on these wings. Now, fast forward to 2016, when Ozimek volans was revealed to the world. This reptile was described based on fossils found in even older Triassic rocks in Poland, nearby to a town called Ozimek, explaining its genus name. The species name volans comes from the Latin word for flying. Quite a lot of fossil material is actually known for this species, with a few nearly complete skeletons being found along with many more fragmentary pieces of bones. With all of the fossil material collected, paleontologists have been able to reconstruct a pretty accurate view of what this animal would have looked like. This was a strange looking creature indeed. It was small, under a metre in length, but larger than Sharovipteryx and with an elongated neck, narrow body and remarkably thin limb bones with hind limbs that were significantly longer than the forelimbs. Ozimek therefore appears to have been a close relative of Sharovipteryx, and when it was first described by paleontologists, it was indeed placed in the same family of reptiles, called Sharovipterygidae. The Sharovipteryx fossil, with those membrane traces attached to the rear limbs, indicates that these elongated legs in Ozimek were probably used for gliding, and so this means, despite not preserving any direct evidence of wing membranes, Ozimek was a glider too. Now you may be wondering why did Ozimek and Sharovipteryx have such an unusual looking way of gliding? Well, it's suspected to be due to the aerodynamic needs of a reptile that has most of its musculature around the hips, and therefore a centre of mass towards the back of the animal. Then, when gliding started to evolve in these animals, as they presumably started jumping from tree to tree and making it further and further distances as they searched for food, this centre of mass towards the hips resulted in wing membranes developing between the back legs and the tail. The paleontologists who described Ozimek actually suggested that this is what the ancestors of the pterosaurs may have been like too, the famous flying reptiles that lived alongside the dinosaurs. Then as true powered flapping flight evolved in them later, the musculature of the chest became more important and enlarged, and so flight membranes became more extensive between the forelimbs and body, meaning the centre of lift changed along with a centre of mass that was shifted forwards. It's still a fascinating and unique way that gliding in reptiles has evolved though, and it's quite different to how other reptiles have achieved this ability, since modern gliding reptiles such as Draco volans use a membrane supported by their ribs instead. Ozimek is particularly interesting for its very distinctive pectoral girdle too, being described by paleontologists as shield-like. 
The largest bone of the pectoral girdle, called the scapulocoracoid, is the biggest bone in the whole skeleton, and there are two holes on either side of the midline suture. Whereas the forwards holes seem to have a common evolutionary origin with the holes in other reptiles' coracoids, the origin of the rear holes was a puzzle for the paleontologists studying this animal, with them seeming to be a unique structure. The pectoral girdle as a whole is very wide but also quite thin along the bottom. It also seems as though this structure would have inhibited any flapping flight with the forelimbs. The question of whether Ozimek and Charoviptrix would have possessed flight membranes along their forelimbs has actually been a subject of quite a bit of debate. With a study from 2006 analysing the aerodynamics of Charoviptrix, finding that small membranes spread between the forelimbs and the base of the neck would have acted as small forward canards and greatly improved the stability of gliding in this animal. Some older interpretations of Charovipteryx gliding behaviour had proposed that no membranes were present along the forelimbs, and others had some membranes behind the forelimbs and attached to the body. The 2006 paper, meanwhile, favoured membranes that reach back from the neck to the front of the forelimbs, as well as membranes from the main body to the front of the hind limbs, forming a large delta wing. The smaller front membranes would then have allowed the animal to stabilise its pitch and to control the centre of lift. It has actually been questioned in the past if the original Charovipteryx fossil preserves any forward membranes, with conflicting reports even on the presence of preserved forelimbs in this fossil, though more recent preparation work seems to have confirmed that the forelimbs are there. Plus, with the later discovery of Ozimek showing that the forelimbs were elongated and thin, similar to the hind limbs but not as long, it seems almost certain that a small forward membrane was present for basic gliding control, but definitely not for flapping. There's still a lot of variation in the exact extent and positionings of the flight surfaces in Charovipteryx and Ozimek that you see in paleoart of these animals, and the debate about how exactly they should be placed is not helped by the fact that there's only one Charovipteryx fossil and no Ozimek fossils that preserve membranes. However, with the combined data of both species, it seems almost certain that both the hind limbs and the forelimbs were supporting flight membranes of some kind. So then it could also be plausible for a membrane to have been present along the main body too, which is exactly how paleontologists have reconstructed Ozimek, in particular with the 3D model made of the species when it was first announced to the world. So these animals were probably very effective gliding reptiles, perfectly adapted for travelling long distances between trees as they searched for their next meal. The classification of Ozimek and Charovipteryx has been an interesting story too, as I mentioned earlier, they both belong to a family called Charovipterygidae, which so far only includes these two species. Now, Charovipterygidae, which I really want to stop saying, is known to definitely be a lineage of archosauromorph reptiles, a very large group including dinosaurs, pterosaurs, crocodilians, and many others. Within the archosauromorphs, they are most probably a member of the Proterosauria, but that's where things get confusing, because the exact definition of what a Proterosaurian is is not exactly clear, and it may in fact be an unnatural grouping, and therefore not really exist at all. Proterosaurians, in the traditional sense, include a lot of other strange Permian and Triassic reptiles, including the ridiculously long-necked marine Tanistrophius, possibly the tree-dwelling Drapanosaurs, and a variety of others. Well, in a slightly surprising turn of events, a study published in 2021 found support for Ozimek, and therefore also Charovipteryx, although it wasn't directly analysed, actually being a member of the Tanistrophiids. This might seem surprising at first, considering that the Tanistrophiids are mostly marine animals, but the authors only say this is a possibility based on the current evidence, and that more study of Ozimek is needed to see if the hypothesis holds up. Plus, it would also show how diverse and adaptable these groups of Triassic reptiles were, adapting to fill all these different niches and habitats. So, Charovipteryx and Ozimek are absolutely wonderful, unique, and strange animals, in the best way possible. I really hope more fossils of other Charovipteryx are found too. I bet there are so many more amazing species of these animals out there to be discovered. And we really could do with a few more papers on the biomechanics of these fascinating creatures. Anyway, I really hope you enjoyed learning about these spectacular animals. Let me know in the comments what other strange Triassic animals you'd like to see me cover too. I'm definitely thinking about doing some more videos on them. Anyway, thank you for watching, and a big thank you to our Patreon supporters, especially our Dinosaur Tier supporters, Amanda Von Nordek, Archianthus, Clara Middleton, Daniel Ingraham, Dhruv Srivastava, Gary Arrington, Giotist, Greg Silvernail, Corey Peterson, Loxipu, Mark Nevin, Mendicant Friar, Mike Pace, Monitor Man, 
Persian Boy, Ralph Balzac, Robert Thomas, and Steve Bradshaw. If you would like to find out more about our world, its history, and the wonderful life that surrounds us all, please feel free to subscribe to the channel if you think we deserve it, and if you would like to see more from us.